Uh, the next thing that we'll focus on will be the limit switches. Now there are two types of limit switches. You have the backup limit switch and the regular floor switches. Now the system actually only needs two switches to act to operate. It's your floor one switch and your floor two switch. However, for safety reasons, I've included a backup switch for the second floor and the first floor. Now you'll notice that in the paperwork that is sent with your unit, you'll have a, a thank you letter that's included first. And then the, you'll also have a sample limit switch setup. We'll, ref, we'll reference this sample limit switch setup now in order to locate the placement of your switches. Now the switches that come with your unit will look similar to this if it's not the same exact one. It, if you'll notice here on the casing it is labeled NO for normally open or NC for normally closed. Now that is important when installing. If you'll notice on the limit switch sample installation the, the switches are not mounted side by side. You have the one that's at the first floor and you have one at the second floor and then the backup will be below the first floor switch and above the top floor switch. Those backup switches will not normally get activated unless something happens to the regular switch, which is possible from wear and tear over a period of time the switch can get bent somehow or whatever. And the whole purpose of the backup switch is to stop the system in case something does happen to that switch. Let's say it's going up and the second floor switch fails, you don't want it to keep going up and then it ends up hitting your hoist and the hoist keeps trying to go, it could possibly break something. And same thing with the first floor, if it goes past the first floor switch, that hoist will keep unwinding and unwinding, eventually it'll start winding back the opposite direction and then you have another problem. So these backup switches are pretty much going to be very, very, very rarely used, if ever, and they'll only be used if the first or second floor regular switch fails. So next, we'll reference the button and limiter connections sheet. That will be this one here. In order to install the limit switches, you'll want to initially set your set your uh, elevator manually to the first floor where you want the first first floor to be lined up. Okay, so that's let's say this is my first floor. You'll notice that the backup switch is still below it. In this sample, of course, it doesn't actually travel that far down, but that's the position. It, it would be below the first floor switch. Now, once you have your elevator floor in its correct position, we'll pretend this is the elevator floor for now. What you're gonna want it to do, let's say this is your first floor switch, and this is on the first floor. In order to install your switch, you're gonna slide the switch until it touches it's until it touches the elevator. You'll hear the click that will let you know that the switch is activated and go ahead and mark your hole or mark where that switch needs to go. And then you can raise your elevator and install that switch in that location. Now you want your backup switch to be activated as well. So we're gonna go, we'll lower the elevator lower to the very lowest position that you want it to be able to stop and you'll do the same situate the same installation procedure with your backup switch after you're done with that you should be able to raise your elevator all the way up to the second floor once it's at your second floor you're going to do the same procedure you're uh, it, since it's coming from the bottom, you're going to slide your limit switch down 
until you hear that click, you mark it, you can move the elevator out of your way, install it. Do the same thing with your backup limit switch at the very highest you would allow it to go and it should be obviously before it gets to your hoist. Set up your backup switch. Now those, again, the backup switch is exactly for that, a backup. And if the regular switch fails and the elevator goes past the floor, it will activate the backup and the backup will stop the unit from working until you get that switch corrected. All right. Next, you're going to reference this page that, that we brought up and you're going to, you're going to run a network wire between all of these limit switches and then to the box. So let's say in this case we have, we're installing the box up on the second floor, let's say. Then we'll run one single network cable all the way from the bottom switch. We're going to make a loop at the first floor switch, make another loop at the second floor switch, another loop at the backup switch, and then it will go into your box. Um, if the box is going to be installed at the first floor, you could do it in reverse. Start at this switch, make a loop here, make a loop here, make a loop at this backup switch, and then go to your controller. If you want it in the middle, same thing. Just loop, start here, loop it at this, run it into the box, run another loop into the box, continue and continue. The whole purpose of that is just simply so you have all four, four sets of wires available in the controller from each switch. You'll want to assign a color for each limit switch. There's four pairs inside of the network cable, so you have four and you have four limit switches so just assign one color per switch and you'll take note on this next sheet what colors you've assigned on the wiring for buttons and limit switches so we're going to get our pin out and you'll notice at the top these have to be wired differently. The backup switches use the normally closed terminals and the first floor switch and the second floor switch use the normally open terminals. That's the only difference. So for the top limit switch or the backup limit switch, um, I'm going to use the orange pair. So that it'll be the orange and the white orange, the, white, the orange with the white stripe. For the second floor, I'm using the green and the green-white, or white-green, whatever you want to call it. For the first floor, I'm using the brown pair. And the first floor backup, I'm using the blue pair. So, I've got those written down. This will be very important later on when you're trying to wire it up into the interface board. Once you run this wire, go ahead and, and connect them. Again, the backup on the top, I'm using the orange pair on the normally closed switch. Ignore these extra wires. This, for this demonstration, I'm using a separate set of wires to each of these connections simply, simply to do an installation for you. This is already wired up for me to just plug in and test the units, um, but I'm using the same switches to do a second unit. So we're going to manually hook this up and using my, uh, my test board. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to the next stage of the installation.